Bernie Sanders was in a committee hearing about taxes, and he went in on the Republican bill. This legislation, which will have a major impact on our economy, has not had one public hearing. Not hearing from economists, from governors, from mayors, from the business community, from ordinary Americans as to what the impact of this legislation will be. This is legislation written for wealthy campaign contributors, and I want to congratulate some of my Republican colleagues for being honest about that. What they said publicly is that they don't pass this bill, their wealthy friends will stop contributing. I appreciate that honesty. Legislation, in fact, not only had no public hearings, but it did have some 6,000 Washington, D.C. lobbyists working on it behind closed doors. Mr. Chairman, every poll that I have seen shows that by overwhelming numbers, the American people do not want this bill to be passed. They know that in the Senate bill, in the midst of massive income and wealth inequality, 62% of the benefits go to the top 1%, and 42% of the benefits go to the top one-tenth of 1%. In America today, the very wealthy are becoming much more wealthy, while the middle class continues to shrink. And your solution is to give 62% of the benefits to the top 1%. The American people also understand that at the end of 10 years, 83 million middle-class families will see their taxes go up under the Senate bill. They know that with 13 million Americans losing their health insurance, health care premiums on the individual market will increase by 10%. And they know that despite the Republicans telling us how concerned you are about the deficit the deficit is going to go up by $1.4 trillion over the next 10 years. And what the American people also are deeply concerned about is what House Speaker Ryan is talking about. And what he is talking about is that after you raise the deficit by $1.4 trillion by giving huge tax breaks to the wealthy and large corporations, you're going to come back and you're going to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid and education and the needs of working families. What kind of decency is there when we have legislation that gives massive tax breaks to billionaires and then comes back in months to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid? This bill must not be passed. God damn. Have I mentioned Bernie would have won? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. You can't help but just get that overwhelming feeling every time you watch something like this. And re remember when uh, Hillary's biggest fans, they would go after uh, Bernie and they'd, and they'd say, oh, he's not sufficiently anti-Trump. Excuse you? <laughs> not only is he sufficiently anti-Trump, he obliterates Trump in ways that you can only dream of. You know, how... Uh, neoliberal corporatists, they don't know exactly how to handle Trump. Because, hey, on some things they kind of agree, like the deregulating uh, further of Wall Street, uh, which literally you had, what, three or four different uh, elected Democrats side with Trump on that one. So they don't know how to do it. So, you know, they're, they tone police and act like, that. you know, hey, we're winning over a lot of support when we go after Trump. And we're like, Mr. President, you are so rude, mean. Poop face. Poop. Garbage mouth. Why don't you break down the barriers and why aren't we stronger together? We should lead with our values. That's what we should do. You're just, you're below the dignity of the office, Mr. Ooh, sick burn. You're below the dignity of the office. Yeah, that one's really gonna sting and fucking land and it's really gonna help you on the policy front, isn't it? You're gonna win a lot of battles by, by uh, saying shit like that. USA Today recently wrote an article that was kind of in, like, it was super outraged, but the crux of the outrage was, and we'll get to this story a little later, uh, what uh, Trump said against Kirsten Gillibrand, and hey, she'll do anything for money, and people, it's fucking underlying sexual innuendo, and that's disgusting, and fuck you, that's so gross. But USA Today wrote this whole article that was like, you know, railing against Trump and listing all the reasons that 
uh, he's he's unfit to be president. You know what didn't make the list? The fact that Donald Trump increased drone strikes 432 percent, uh, increased wars, you know, it increased the troop levels in Afghanistan and Iraq and Syria. Uh, got rid of the rules of engagement in Somalia. Just started bombing Niger as well. Um, so the increase in imperialism, the escalation to the brink of war with North Korea, didn't make this list of reasons why Trump should go. Um, appointing Goldman Sachs throughout his administration, writing a tax bill that in no uncertain terms destroys the middle class and the poor. Everybody who makes $75,000 a year or less will see an increase in their taxes over the next 10 years. So you say, oh, tax cuts, tax cuts, tax cuts, that's who we care about, the people. But no, you're raising taxes on regular people. All the things, him destroying the internet, doesn't make the list. What makes the list? <gasps> Mr. President! You tweeted something very, very rude! And I don't like it, mister! Why do you insist on going after Trump in the worst imaginable ways? Everything he's doing is destroying the country. But you... Don't focus on that, because part of you agrees with his draconian policy agenda. So all the establishment has is to tone police him. Oh, yeah, he's a rough guy, isn't he? That's why he should step down. What? How about the way he's fucking destroying the tax system? How about the way he's escalating foreign wars? They got nothing to say about that. Okay, but Bernie Sanders does. And what Bernie's doing there is, he's, um... He's bringing up all the relevant facts about this tax plan. It, 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 people who sh shriek about the deficit all day long. This adds $1 trillion to $1.4 trillion to the deficit. Then they have the nerve to turn around and go, well, obviously, we don't have the money. We can't... We have to cut Social Security and Medicare. No, you don't. You didn't have to fucking add another $1 to $1.4 trillion to the deficit. If you wanted to, to uh, you know, be fiscally responsible, don't do this fucking tax bill. Don't do it and then turn around and say, sorry, grandma, we got to cut off your fucking medical, uh, your, your medicine, your pills, you know, or we got to raise the retirement age. What are we going to do? We have no choice. The deficit. But you're increasing the deficit right now. You want to vote to increase it. And then you want to turn around and go, ah, oh, the deficit. What a problem. So, and he's talking about how lobbyists wrote the bill. Literally, it wasn't, you know, written by people who give a fuck about the middle class. It's written by uh, corporate elites. So this is how you fight and this is how you win. And 2020 can't get here soon enough because the rumblings on the street are Bernie Sanders is looking to run again. And if he runs, he wins. You know, if he's... <laughs> Trump said the other day, Bernie would run against me even if he's in a wheelchair. Right. And he'd win. Yeah. yeah. Remember FDR? A social Democrat in a wheelchair? Remember how he won four fucking times and he couldn't stop winning so Republicans came up with term limits? Yeah. So, you know... He thinks, well, obviously I have nothing to fear. There's a social democrat in a wheelchair. That's exactly the thing that you should fear because he will destroy you.